My dear readers, it is with a cocktail of both sadness and exasperation that I turn my pen towards the unholy spectre that is Beetlejuice II. Yes, here we are a mere thirty-five years after the iconic mischief-maker first clambered his way out of some dark and twisted corner of Tim Burton's imagination. One might think that a single dance atop the table with dead shrimp claws was enough to get the message across. But evidently Hollywood is hell-bent on making sure we revisit every grave and every shade of a bygone era, dusting off and dressing up the desiccated corpses of our once beloved anti-heroes. And so here we are, invited to a celebration of crass resurrection, though it would be more aptly called a funeral of dignity. In Beetlejuice too, the story, or what passes for it, sees Winona Ryder's Lydia Dietz return with her own teenage daughter, played by the ubiquitous Jenna Ortega. The plot, or perhaps I should call it the premise, as that would be far too generous a word, has Lydia drawn back to Winter River, where her daughter, in a series of laughably telegraphed accidents, opens a portal to the afterlife, thus summoning the titular spectre once more. Michael Keaton, bless his heart, dons the stripes and make-up again, as if he were a relic bound not only by his contract but by some cosmic need to fulfil the ghostly existence of Beetlejuice until death and beyond. And while I am all for the man's talents, I'm beginning to suspect that Michael Keaton is no longer acting as Beetlejuice, but rather that Beetlejuice has crept into his very marrow, possessing him body and soul. This performance could only be seen as self-parody if one could discern any distance between the performer and the role. But alas, it seems he has simply become the mad revenant, shrieking and gurning his way through this tired rehash, as though it were his only way to survive. Now, to be fair, Beetlejuice was always a creature of grotesquery and excess, a living embodiment of the depraved, delighted eyed pushing boundaries not out of any grand principle, but simply for the joy of the taboo. Keaton's original performance was indeed quite something, a carefully orchestrated frenzy of misrule, a carefully tuned absurdity that was somehow, bafflingly, still charming. But in the sequel, what once felt anarchic now comes off as a kind of tragic desperation. Beetlejuice is no longer the mischievous poltergeist. He's a tired ghost trudging through his own tired routine. Instead of joyfully upending the living's world, he seems resigned to wandering his own decaying purgatory, doomed to haunt audiences who, if they are anything like me, would much rather he stayed in the afterlife. Watching Keaton perform the same old antics feels less like a mischievous romp through the supernatural, and more like watching a man labour through a grotesque pantomime, his face a rictus of the comic mania he once so effortlessly embodied. But of course, it wouldn't be a modern Hollywood production if there wasn't some perfunctory attempt to expand the mythology or raise the stakes. This sequel, in all its hubris, takes pains to deliver us to the netherworld, as though we, the audience, had any real desire to tour the corridors of the dead. We are treated to gaudy vistas of CGI landscapes, a garish and pointless underworld bureaucracy, each one less inspired than the last. In the original, the dead world's bleak, bureaucratic absurdity was funny precisely because it was understated, a grim parody of our own soulless administration. Now, however, it seems Hollywood cannot resist over-explaining, over-showing and over-indulging every morsel. The mysterious has been flattened into the mundane, and the disturbing rendered as kitsch. The supposed heart of this plot, Lydia's relationship with her daughter, is yet another uninspired attempt to inject a beating heart into a hollow cadaver. Ortega's character, predictably alienated, cynical and predictably goth, makes the original Lydia look like Pollyanna. They share the most tepid boilerplate exchanges, their mother-daughter bond feeling as genuine as the CGI cobwebs draped across the set. It's a cynical ploy, designed not to engage us emotionally but to add an obligatory layer of depth so the film might masquerade as something other than a nostalgia-laden cash grab. The dialogue, sprinkled with references to social media and cancel culture, is desperate in its attempts to sound contemporary, achieving only the effect of a creaky, self-conscious parent trying to bond with teenagers by parroting their lingo. Indeed, it is a strange irony that Beetlejuice too is essentially a piece of cinematic necromancy, a desperate attempt to summon the ghost of an era that is better left dead. And in doing so, it has only managed to display the true decrepitude of the Hollywood apparatus that seeks to wring profit from the grave of creativity. 
Each beat, each attempt to recreate the magic, serves only to remind us how utterly lifeless this reanimated corpse of a film truly is. Keaton, in his once flawless grotesquerie, has become a ghost himself, stumbling through a house of pop culture horrors, dragging a corpse that, in his better moments, he might have wished left to rest. In fact, if the filmmakers were truly committed to their theme of the dead returning, I would suggest they prepare a third instalment where Keaton's literal corpse might take on the role. After all, it would be no less discomforting to watch him dragged out in some kind of undead animatronic form, puppet-mastered by Hollywood's insatiable need to profit off his every last breath. In this grim future, Keaton's bodily remains might well be marionetted across the screen, his decomposing visage frozen in a final, ghastly smirk, performing the same tired antics with the empty mechanical motions of an actor long past the point of reprieve. What a fitting metaphor it would be for this industry of undead franchises, an industry unable to let go of the very icons it itself is killing. This is not merely a poor film, it is a memento mori, a reminder that nostalgia, when excavated and propped up on strings, is nothing more than the ghastly spectacle of a culture refusing to let go of its past. One can only hope, after watching this sad, shambling husk of a sequel, that we will be spared further resurrections of Beetlejuice, Lydia, and the rest of the Dietz clan. They deserve to rest, and we perhaps deserve a bit more than another visit to the dusty graves of our former pleasures. <laughs>